clue. So in this video we're going to talk about Sophocles' play Philoctetes, which is not one of my favorite Greek plays. Um, largely because I feel like the ending of the play basically negates everything that happened before it. So uh, essentially the story of Philoctetes is that he was a great archer, he was a friend of Heracles, and when Heracles' mortal body died, uh, Philoctetes was the one who lit the funeral pyre which let Heracles' spirit, or whatever it is, ascend and join the gods. As a reward for that, uh, Philoctetes received Heracles' bow, which would never miss its target. When the Greeks sailed to Troy, Philoctetes sailed with them with the bow, but uh, he approached too close to a god shrine and he was bitten in the foot by a snake. That wound got infected, it began to stink, and so the Greeks dumped him on an island by himself. So, uh, only later did they discover, because of a, a Trojan prophet, that in order to win the Trojan War, they needed Philoctetes and his bow to come to Troy and join the war. Which was unlikely to happen because, A, they left him with a rotting, mucusy foot on an island by himself. B, uh, he hates them. So uh, the, the problem then becomes how do they get Philoctetes to come to Troy so they can win this war? And this is where Sophocles' play picks up, basically. Um, so Odysseus, who's one of the main people that Philoctetes hates, um, sails to the island, Lemnos, with Neotolmus, who is the son of Achilles. There, Odysseus instructs Neotolmus to trick Philoctetes into giving them the bow. So, what... Cause, so, in something like The Odyssey, Odysseus comes off pretty okay. Personally, I don't care for him in the Odyssey, but we're meant to generally sort of sympathize with him. He is the hero of that poem. But there's a lot of other depictions of Odysseus, including this play, where his sort of cunning and his trickery and things like this are not really perceived as positive. They're, they're presented as negative character traits. So Odysseus says to Neotolmus, Son of Achilles, the mission you're on will test your worth, and not just with your body. I've given you a strange task, something new to you, but you must do it. You are here to help me. Neotolmus says, what are your orders? And Odysseus says, you have to spin a yarn to Philoctetes. When he asks, who you, uh, when he asks you who you are and where you're from, say, the son of Achilles. No need to lie about that. And you're sailing home. You can't stand the Greeks anymore, and you've left the Armada in a rage. They lied to you about leaving home, their only hope of taking Ilium. But when you did, instead of handing over to you the arms of Achilles, yours by right, they gave them to Odysseus. That actually is uh, something that, that happened. And that's central, actually, to Sophocles' play Ajax, which I did a video on earlier, um, that Odysseus got Achilles' uh, arms and armor. Say whatever you like about me. Keep me with abuse. It won't hurt me in the least but in, in anything less will spell disaster for the Greeks. For unless this man's bow is taken, you'll never conquer the land of Troy. Let me explain to you why it is safe for you to deal with this man, but not for me, and without risk. When you set sail, you pledged yourself to none. You were not compelled, nor part of the earlier expedition. But none of these conditions apply to me. If he comes on me with bow in hand, I'm a dead man. And you, my friend, because of me, will be dead as well. So what we have to plan is a way for you to steal the magic bow. I know, my boy, it's not in your character to lie or injure others, but success is always sweet if we get something that we want. Just do it and, you, and we'll be proved right. 
lend yourself to me and be a rascal just for a day. Afterwards, you'll have all the time in the world to be the most upright man alive. So basically, Odysseus convinces Neotolmus to trick and then rob Philoctetes. Um, Neotolmus is not comfortable with this, but his conflict is between his duty to the Greek army and his, his duty to help them win the war at Troy versus his compassion for Philoctetes, who's been abandoned and living this sort of subsistence life on this island. Eventually, Neotolmus does actually get the bow from Philoctetes. He may, basically makes friends with Philoctetes, and when Philoctetes' foot starts hurting, he has this sort of attack of, of pain, he hands the bow to Neotolmus, who he... Uh, and this is a bow that no other human being has touched since it passed from Heracles to Philoctetes. So this is a tremendous mark of trust. And Neotolmus betrays that trust. Uh, he, he, when Odysseus shows up, he, Odysseus and Neotolmus basically announce that now they're going back to Troy, and if Philoctetes won't join them, they're going to leave him on the island to die. Philoctetes does have some good, sort of pathos-driven parts, although some of them are a bit over the top. Um, but like, his accusations and his, his pleading with Neotolmus to give him back the bow are really touching, in a way. I mean, it's a bizarre sort of blend of pathos and bathos. So pathos is appeals to emotion. Bathos is over-the-top excessive appeals to emotion. We've got that in Philoctetes. So, like, at one point he says, uh, shortly after Neotolmus reveals the deception, Philoctetes says, So, I'm miserably betrayed. Stranger, what have you done to me? Give me back my bow, and now... Neotolmus says, I'm afraid I cannot. Duty and policy forced me to obey those in command. Philoctetes has this lengthy speech. He says, you bonfire of monstrosity, you, piece, you masterpiece of vice. What have you done to me? How have you tricked me? You do not blush to look me in the eyes, you villain, I who turn to you in need. By taking my bow, you have robbed me of my life. Give it back. I beg you, give it back. My son, I beseech you, by the gods of your fathers, do not deprive me of life, my, me, not poor wretched me. And now he won't talk to me, looks away. He'll never give it up. You harbors and headlands, you friendly mountain beasts, you rocky pinnacles. You're the only companions that I know, and now address and tell the hurt that Achilles' son has done to me. He swore to take me home and is taking me to Troy. He pledged his word with his right hand and confiscates my sacred bow, the bow of Heracles, the son of Zeus, who wants, who wants to show me off to the Argives as if exhibiting some champion fighter that he took by force, unaware of the corpse he is killing this shadow of smoke, this phantom wisp. Yet in the days of my strength he would never have taken me, nor, nor even as I am, except by a trick. I've been obscenely cheated. What shall I do? Oh, give it back. Even now it is not too late. Be true to yourself. And the speech goes on in this same vein for a while. Um, so again, there's some good parts here. There's some compelling stuff. Um, when Philoctetes sort of addresses the island itself, you harbors and headlands, you friendly mountain beasts, you rocky pinnacles, and calls them the only companions he has. This, I mean, it, there's some really good stuff here, but then we also have interspersed throughout this lengthy speech, this almost look whining, sort of wheedling, give me back my bow, refrain which i mean makes perfect sense i mean it, it is the one thing that's kept him alive on this island so that i mean that's a significant thing for him anyway neotolmus does not decide to give the boat back initially I'll, I'll say that initially uh so he and odysseus go to prepare to sail to troy 
uh, Philoctetes is basically like, well, now I'm going to go die in this cave because I can't really walk. I don't have my bow, so I can't hunt any food. The animals are going to eat me. This sucks. Neotolmus, having gotten down to the ships, has a crisis of conscience. Uh, at which point he goes back up to the cave and gives Philoctetes back his bow. And he pleads with Philoctetes. He makes a, a rhetorical speech to try and convince uh, this guy to come with them to Troy. Philoctetes basically says, no, I'm not going to Troy. There is nothing that will persuade me to go to Troy. You promised to take me home. I'm going to hold you to that promise. And Neotolmus says, okay, I will take you home. At which point, according to uh, the stage directions, this is the Paul Roche uh, translation for Signet Classics, by the way, and I, I mention that because the stage directions here are an editorial stage direction. They're not something that we get in the original Sophocles versions. But the stage direction written by Paul Roche says, There's a rumble of sound and Heracles appears above the rocks of Philoctetes' cave. So basically, Heracles shows up at the end and he's like, Actually, Philoctetes, you need to go to Troy. I'm going to send Asclepius the god of healing, he's going to heal your foot, then you're going to take Troy with Neotolmus, the two of you working together, best friends forever, at least until Troy falls, um, and then you're both going to be heroes. At which point, Philoctetes is basically like, okay, fine, I'll head to Troy, sounds great. And they do. Like, that's the end of the play. Heracles just shows up and says, oh, actually all this stuff that's been going on for the entirety of this play is now irrelevant because I, Heracles the god, <laughs> command you Philoctetes to go to Troy, win the war, and you're just going to do it no questions asked. The whole attempt to the whole attempt to trick Philoctetes, Odysseus's threats to kidnap him by force, uh, Neotolmus's attempt to persuade him via rhetoric, all of it is irrelevant. Everything that we've seen or read throughout the entire play could have just been skipped and we could have just gone to the end where Heracles says, this is what you have to do. And I, for me, I find that incredibly unsatisfying in this play, which is why I'm not a big fan.